how are chicken wings different than human arms? And then they actually gave the options. Uh, chickens have more phalanges, or fingers. Human joints bend more easily. Chickens have more wrist bones. Or chickens have fused phalanges. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so I think let's just start by talking about what phalanges are. If we could jump to my screen, I'm just going to show really quickly. Um, this is a simple diagram of a human hand. Um, and it kind of shows you the breakup between the, the uh, carpals and the phalanges. So we've got your carpals and your metacarpals, which essentially make up uh, the larger uh, part of your, your hand, your palm, and the bones in, inside of your palm. Um, and then the phalanges are the, the finger bones. And you've got your proximal phalanges, which are the bones that are closest to your uh, hand the intermediate phalanges, which are in the middle, and the distal phalanges, which are the most distant. But that doesn't really matter too much for this problem. We're really just thinking about the fact that, okay, the phalanges are the, the fingers, and then just noticing where the carpals and the metacarpals are. So here's a generalized bird arm. We're going to just operate from the assumption that um, chicken arms are really similar to bird arms in general. Um, and you'll notice, and actually what I need to do here, I need to get us a picture of, let's see, a human arm bones entirely, because I meant to show you that in its entirety. So hold on one second. Um, OK, uh, we can jump back to my screen. Um, so the, the bones in the hand aside, um, you can see that we've got the, the humerus bone, uh, which is the upper arm bone. And then the lower arm uh, is comprised of two bones, the ulna and the radius. Uh, and if we look at our uh, bird, oh gosh, what did I do with that? With our bird arm, we can see that the bird arm actually has uh, the same parts. So here's the humerus and the bird arm. It comprises the upper arm. Um, and, oh gosh, there's the humerus in our human arm. So we can see that those are really similar. And then you've got the ulna and the radius, the lower arm and the bird. And you've got the ulna and the radius, the lower arm and the human, right? So um, things like this, right? I'm just going to point out right now, things like this are reasons why scientists started to believe going back hundreds and hundreds of years, but more were more convinced in recent years that, that there was a connection between all different forms of life, right? Like uh, if chickens and humans weren't related through evolution, why is it that we continue to see so many of the same structures? And obviously not just chickens and humans, but if you look at any two forms of life, you can often find similarities between them. Um, and so it begs that question, okay, if they're so similar internally, the structure, does that say something about where they came from? Um, and, and maybe how they're related. Um, so um, we can see in the, in the answer to the question, just to get back to that, um, you can see that up here the, the metacarpals, in addition to the phalanges uh, of the bird arm, are fused. And so the correct answer is going to be D, chickens have fused phalanges. It's not true that chickens have more wrist bones, right? There's not extra bones hiding in the wrist. There is the alula, but I don't think that they, they were counting that. Um, uh, human joints bend more easily. Um, that may actually be true. I don't know too much about bendability in chicken joints, but uh, that was not the answer they were going for here, I'm convinced. And then chickens have more phalanges. You can see that actually chickens, in theory, have the same number of phalanges, but uh, they're all fused together again. So you can sort of see that in this image. And then just really briefly, I just wanted to show, I've got it somewhere. This is kind of a cool image which shows the distinction between uh, a human arm, the bones in a human arm, the bones in a bird arm, and the bones in a bat arm. And, and the thing that is so noticeable here, it, the, the, each bone is color coded, so you can see like um, the, the red bone is the ulna in all three. And you can see the upper arms of these three creatures are very similar, but then when we get to the hands of the three creatures, the bird being all fused together here is so different than the human down here. But if we look at the bat arm, or the bat hand, excuse me, you can see the phalanges of the bat hand are, are much more like a human hand. Of course, the phalanges are much longer, um, and we could maybe even see the carpals are more compressed, but, but even so. Um, and, and this is one of the pieces of evidence that uh, bats are more closely related to humans than birds are. There are other pieces of evidence, right? The fact that, um, that bats exhibit all characteristics of mammals, like they have uh, uh, warm blood, give live birth, all those kinds of things. Um, those are other pieces of evidence, but looking at the morphology, the shape of an organism's bones, um, can really uh, help us to sort of see these connections. And so the question was great, but I think sort of the thing behind it, this idea that by studying bone structures from one organism to another, you can, again, you can see these connections that suggest that uh, all life is connected and related somehow.